Hello to all. Today we are going to discuss the stomach part of the elementary canal. This is the 11.1 part because we will be studying the stomach with two or three parts. So that's why I have written this 11.1 part and in the succeeding days we will be coming with 11.2, 11.3. Okay. So stomach is situated on the left side of the abdominal cavity. It is present below the diaphragm on the left side of the abdominal cavity and it is the widest means it is the broadest part of the elementary canal and it is a bag like muscular structure it is a bag like muscular structure and it is j shaped when it is empty means in a empty condition its shape is j shaped and remember this thing that it is a bag like structure which is present between the esophagus and the duodenum which is the first part of the small intestine okay now if i talk about the parts of the human stomach then there are total four parts cardiac fundic body and pyloric or pylorus part generally i have seen that in books there are only three parts shown that is cardiac fundic and pyloric but if i talk particularly about the human stomach then exactly there are how many parts four parts cardiac fundic body and pylorus cardiac fundic body and this part is pylorus okay and the form of food in stomach is chyme basically you know very well that first digestion occur in the buccal cavity and that partially crushed form of the food mixed up with the saliva in the buccal cavity is known as the bolus now the food is digested more in the stomach and then the form of the food is called as the chyme so if the question is asked that what type of the form of food is found in the stomach so you will say it is chyme and when we talk about the intestine we say that the form of food is chyme fine now the cardia this part this part of the stomach first part which is just near the esophagus the cardia is the point where esophagus connect to the stomach where esophagus connect to the stomach it is clearly visible in the diagram that cardia is the part or the point where esophagus connect to the stomach see esophagus is connecting to the stomach fine so first part is the cardiac part now second one found above above means above the cardiac part above the cardiac part and left to the cardia now this part is left this part is left so found above the cardia and left to the cardia is the fundus part popularly it is also called as the fundic part of the stomach is the fundus and it is dome shaped you are able to view this thing like this it is dome shaped part so i can say that just above the cardia part and to the left of the cardia a dome shaped part is present and that dome shaped part is called as fundus is it clear now below the fundus below the fundus means here this part particularly this part now below the fundus is the body and it is the main part of the stomach majority of the part of the stomach is the body so this is the main part of the stomach so this is the third part we have discussed the cardia part we have discussed the fundus part we have discussed the body and the last part is funnel shaped La last part is funnel shaped why funnel shaped because from here to here this part is the pylorus part this part is the pylorus part now this part is broad the part of the pylorus which is towards the body is broad it is funnel like and the part which is towards the which is towards the duodenum is narrow so see here it is funnel shaped part pylorus and it connects the stomach to the duodenum why because pylorus is the part of the stomach which is actually opening in the duodenum part of the small intestine so it is funnel shaped pylorus and it connects the stomach to the duodenum and its wider part wider part is this one its wider part is called as pyloric antrum see here 
its wider part its wider part this part is called as pyloric antrum and it is connected to the body of course it is connected to the body the narrow part this part this part the narrow part of the pylorus is called as is called as the pyloric canal this part now this part is called as the pyloric canal and it is connected to the duodenum so what i want to say the broad part of the pylorus which is connected to the body of the stomach is pyloric antrum and the narrow part of the pylorus which is connected to the duodenum is called as the pyloric pyloric canal fine now the very important thing to notice here is that that at the junction of the esophagus and the cardiac part of the stomach at the junction of the esophagus and the cardiac part of the stomach a valve is present known as the cardiac sphincter known as the cardiac sphincter this cardiac sphincter allows the food to come from esophagus to the stomach but prevents the backflow of the food from the stomach to the esophagus so at the junction of the pylorus and the, uh, at the junction of see here at the junction of esophagus this point at the junction of esophagus and cardia what is present cardiac sphincter is present which prevent backflow of the food and this one at the junction of at this place at the junction of pylorus at the junction of pylorus and the duodenum at the junction of the pylorus and the duodenum another valve is present which is called as the pyloric sphincter which is called as the pyloric sphincter it allows the food to move from from the stomach to the duodenum but prevent the backflow of the food from duodenum to stomach fine is it clear now if you are able to see i have made certain folds in the stomach and these folds are nothing they are called as ruggies they are called as ruggies in empty stomach but remember this thing that ruggies are found only in empty stomach only in empty stomach mucosa and submucosa mucosa and submucosa are the lining of the stomach okay in empty stomach the mucosa and the submucosa fall into fall into a large fold right fall into a large fold and that fold is called as the ruggie but condition is that ruggies are the folds of the mucosa and the submucosa of the stomach but the condition is that they are only found in the empty stomach fine and absence of the ruggi is the primary indication of the stomach cancer because those people uh, whom are suffering from the stomach cancer in them these folds of mucosa and submucosa known as the ruggies are totally absent fine now if you see the structure of the stomach then you are able to see the two curvatures one is this curvature which is convex known as the greater curvature and one is this curvature like this this is the lesser curvature so the convex lateral surface the convex like this the convex lateral surface of the stomach is called as the greater curvature and the concave this part and the concave medial border and the concave medial border is called as the lesser curvature this is the lesser curvature fine so this was all about the, the structure of the stomach and in the stomach the food is stored temporarily at least for 4 to 5 hours that's why we keep a gap between the meals we take breakfast in the morning then in lunch right uh, uh, in the lunch hours we take the lunch and in the evening hours we take the dinner why because the stomach stores the food for how many hours at least 4 to 5 hours and then uh, by the action of various enzymes and uh, the hcl then the food moves towards the duodenum part of the small intestine okay so this was the introductory lecture of the stomach a lot of things have to come in the upcoming videos we have to discuss the gastric glands which are found in the stomach we have to discuss the various type of the special cells say for the auxentic cells right different different types of the cells uh, right we have to discuss that also 
and we have to also study that how does the digestion process occur in the stomach so uh, we will be uploading soon the videos related to the stomach so thanks a lot for watching me